The attack helicopter was born in the jungles of Vietnam and matured on the plains of Cold War Europe. And here's every major type that defined this revolutionary weapon. Early gunships and armed utility helicopters. Bell UH-1 Huey gunship. The Huey wasn't designed as a gunship, but Vietnam changed everything. Desperate to protect troop-carrying Hueys, the Army started bolting machine guns, rockets, and grenade launchers onto them. These armed Hueys became the first true helicopter gunships, flying low and fast, suppressing enemy positions before the transport choppers landed. Crews jury-rigged weapons mounts, experimented with configurations, and literally invented helicopter gunship tactics through trial and error. The Huey gunship proved the concept, showing that armed helicopters could dominate a battlefield. It was crude, vulnerable, and absolutely essential to air mobility operations. Bell AH-1 Cobra. This was the real deal, the world's first purpose-built attack helicopter. The Cobra took the Huey's drivetrain and wrapped it in a sleek, narrow fuselage that presented a minimal target profile. That tandem seating, with the gunner up front and pilot behind and above, became the standard configuration copied by every attack helicopter since. In Vietnam, Cobras provided devastating fire support, their speed and agility making them far more effective than armed Hueys. The Cobra could dance around the battlefield, pop up from behind cover, fire, and disappear. It transformed helicopter warfare and remained in production for decades, with the Marine Corps flying upgraded versions into the 21st century. Hughes OH-6 Kayu armed variant. The little Loach wasn't meant to be a gunship. It was a light observation helicopter. But in Vietnam, some OH-6s were armed with miniguns and used for hunter-killer missions alongside Cobras. The OH-6 would fly low, deliberately drawing enemy fire to reveal positions, while the Cobra orbited overhead, ready to strike. It took incredible courage to be a loach pilot, flying at treetop level, daring the enemy to shoot. These little helicopters proved that size didn't matter. Tactics and pilot skill did. First-generation dedicated attack helicopters. Bell AH-1 Super Cobra. The Marine Corps took the basic Cobra concept and supercharged it. The Super Cobra, or AH-1W, featured twin engines for reliability over water, improved avionics, and the ability to carry tow anti-tank missiles and later Hellfire missiles. Marines needed a helicopter that could operate from ships and support amphibious operations. The Super Cobra delivered, serving in Desert Storm, Somalia, and numerous other conflicts. It was faster, more powerful, and more capable than the original Cobra, proving the basic design was sound enough to evolve with technology. Bell AH-1 Cobra Tau variant, the Game Changer. When the Army added Tau anti-tank missiles to the Cobra in the 1970s, it became a true tanks killer. Each Tau could destroy a Soviet tank from miles away and a single Cobra could carry eight missiles. Suddenly, NATO had a mobile, flexible weapon that could blunt Soviet armored thrusts. The Cobra Tau crews trained relentlessly for the battle in Germany that thankfully never came, perfecting pop-up attacks and shoot-and-scoot tactics. The combination of helicopter mobility and precision anti-tank missiles revolutionized defensive warfare. Hughes McDonnell Douglas AH-64, Apache, the most famous attack helicopter ever built and possibly the most capable. The Apache was designed from scratch to fight and survive on the modern battlefield. That distinctive nose held targeting sensors that could find tanks in darkness or bad weather. The 30 millimeter chain gun could shred light vehicles while Hellfire missiles destroyed heavy armor. But what really set the Apache apart was survivability, redundant systems, armored cockpit, ability to fly with significant battle damage. In Desert Storm, Apaches fired the first shots, destroying Iraqi radar sites. They hunted tanks in the desert, operated at night, and proved devastatingly effective. 
the Apache became the standard against which all other attack helicopters were measured. Bell OH-58D Kiowa Warrior, the little scout helicopter that could fight. The Kiowa Warrior wasn't a pure attack helicopter, but with its mast-mounted sight above the rotor, it could peek over terrain without exposing the aircraft. Armed with rockets, machine guns, and later Stinger and Hellfire missiles, the Kiowa operated in hunter-killer teams with Apaches. The Kiowa would find targets using its sensors, staying hidden, while Apaches delivered the killing blow. In Iraq and Afghanistan, armed Kiowas proved incredibly effective in urban combat, their small size and agility allowing operations in tight spaces where larger helicopters struggled. Soviet and Russian attack helicopters. Mil Mi-24 Hind, Western intelligence was shocked when the Hind appeared. It was huge, heavily armed, and could carry troops. The Mi-24 combined attack helicopter and armored transport, a uniquely Soviet solution. Those stub wings carried rockets, missiles, and gun pods, while a 12.7 millimeter machine gun turret sat in the nose. The passenger compartment could carry eight soldiers. In Afghanistan, the Hind became infamous. Afghan fighters called it the Devil's Chariot. It was tough, surviving battle damage that would down other helicopters. The Hind could suppress enemy positions, then land troops to finish the job. Soviet doctrine emphasized combined arms, and the Hind embodied it perfectly. Yes, it was less agile than Western attack helicopters, but it was versatile and terrifying. Mil Mi-28 Havoc. The Soviet Union's answer to the Apache, designed specifically as a tank killer without the Heinz transport capability. The Mi-28 was all business, heavily armored, designed to survive hits from 12.7 Melthenitas rounds with redundant systems and separated engines to improve survivability. It carried a 30 mm cannon and up to 16 anti-tank missiles. The cockpit armor was so thick, pilots joked they were flying a tank the Mi-28 arrived late in the Cold War and didn't see significant service until the 1990s, but it represented Soviet lessons learned from Afghanistan. They'd realized that survivability mattered as much as firepower. Kamov K-50 Black Shark, the most radical attack helicopter design of the Cold War. Kamov used coaxial counter-rotating rotors, eliminating the tail rotor entirely. This made the K-50 more compact more maneuverable, and less vulnerable to tail rotor hits. But here's the really crazy part. It was single seat. One pilot operated everything, weapons and flying, using advanced automation. Western designers thought this was impossible. Attack helicopters needed two crew members. The K-50 also featured an ejection seat, another first for helicopters. The coaxial rotors were blown off by explosive charges then the seat fired. It was innovative, controversial, and very Russian in its approach to solving problems differently. Kamov K-52 Alligator, the two-seat version of the K-50 with side-by-side -side seating like the hind. The K-52 retained the coaxial rotor design and ejection seats while adding a second crew member for better situational awareness and workload management. It represented a compromise between the radical Ka-50 concept and traditional attack helicopter design. The Ka-52's maneuverability was exceptional. Thanks to those coaxial rotors, it could perform maneuvers impossible for conventional helicopters. European Attack Helicopters Aerospatial Gazelle, armed variant. The French Gazelle was primarily a light utility helicopter but armed versions served with multiple nations. With hot or tau anti-tank missiles, the Gazelle became a lightweight tank killer. It was fast, agile, and much cheaper than purpose-built attack helicopters. British Army Gazelles armed with tau missiles provided anti-tank capability during the Cold War. The Gazelle proved that not every attack helicopter needed to be a heavy, expensive gunship. Sometimes speed and a few good missiles were enough. Westland Lynx Armed Variant. Originally designed as a utility helicopter, the Lynx could be armed with tow missiles, 
making it an effective anti-tank platform. British Army Lynx helicopters trained for the defense of Germany, ready to ambush Soviet tank columns. The Lynx was exceptionally fast for its time, holding the world helicopter speed record for years. Armed Lynx helicopters also operated from Royal Navy ships, providing anti-surface warfare capability. It was versatile, reliable, and quintessentially British, making do with what you have and doing it well. Augusta, A-129 Mangusta, Italy's entry into the attack helicopter field and the first European-designed dedicated attack helicopter. The A-129 was lightweight, relatively simple, and cost-effective. It could carry Tau or Hellfire missiles and a gun turret. The Mangusta emphasized agility and low operational costs over heavy armor and firepower. It proved that European nations could design competitive attack helicopters without American or Soviet technology. The A-129 served with the Italian army and was exported to Turkey, validating its design philosophy. Eurocopter Tiger The ultimate European collaborative project, developed by France and Germany. The Tiger was designed from the start as a sophisticated, digital-age attack helicopter. It featured advanced sensors, helmet-mounted displays, and the ability to operate in all weather conditions. Different variants served different roles, anti-tank, fire support, and reconnaissance. The Tiger arrived late, after the Cold War ended, but its development spanned the 1980s and represented Europe's ambition to match American technology. It was sleek, capable, and expensive, proving European industry could create world-class military helicopters when nations cooperated. Advanced and Experimental Designs Bell AH-56 Cheyenne. This should have been America's first advanced attack helicopter, and it was radical. The Cheyenne combined helicopter and airplane features, a pusher propeller for high speed, stub wings for lift, retractable landing gear, and a rigid rotor system. It was fast, reaching 220 miplasms, and heavily armed with a belly turret, missiles, and rockets. But the program collapsed under technical problems, inter-service rivalry, and cost overruns. The Army cancelled it in 1972, choosing instead to develop the less ambitious but more practical Apache. The Cheyenne represented what might have been a high-speed compound helicopter that pushed technology too far, too fast. Sikorsky S-67 Blackhawk, not the famous UH-60, but an earlier attack helicopter demonstrator. Sikorsky built the S-67 as a private venture to showcase attack helicopter technology. It was sleek, fast, and looked menacing with its tandem cockpit and stub wings loaded with weapons. The S-67 set speed records and demonstrated impressive capabilities, but the Army had already committed to other programs. Only one was built, and it crashed during a demonstration in 1974. The S-67 showed Sikorsky's innovative spirit, even if it never reached production. Lockheed AH-56, Cheyenne. Already covered above, but worth emphasizing, this aircraft's ambition and ultimate failure taught valuable lessons about realistic requirements and program management. Boeing Sikorsky RAH-66 Comanche, the last great Cold War attack helicopter program, though it extended into the post-Cold War era. The Comanche was designed as a stealthy scout and attack helicopter, incorporating radar-absorbing materials and a sleek design to reduce its signature. It would have replaced both the Kiowa and some Apache missions. The RAH-66 featured advanced digital systems, enclosed weapons bays, and capabilities far beyond any existing helicopter. But after spending $7 billion and 20 years in development, the program was canceled in 2004. The Comanche represented the peak of Cold War, thinking applied to helicopter design, sophisticated, expensive, and ultimately deemed unnecessary for the wars America was actually fighting. Specialized Variants and Conversions Bell 209 Huey Cobra Prototype, the original demonstrator that led to the AH-1 Cobra, 
Bell engineers essentially put a new fuselage on Huey components, creating the attack helicopter concept in just a few months. This prototype proved the viability of dedicated attack helicopters and saved countless lives in Vietnam by getting a capable gunship into service quickly. Sikorsky HH-3, Jolly Green Giant Armed Variant, primarily a rescue helicopter, but some HH-3s were armed for combat search and rescue missions. These variants carried miniguns and sometimes other weapons to suppress enemy fire while recovering downed pilots. They proved that even large transport helicopters could be militarized for specific missions. Boeing CH-47 Chinook gunship, the Guns A Go Go program, armed Chinooks with multiple machine guns and grenade launchers for fire support. It was experimental and showed that even transport helicopters could provide devastating firepower. The armed Chinook proved too vulnerable for sustained combat, but it demonstrated creative thinking in adapting available assets.